The double dash in Excel is one of those under the radar hacks that most people don't know about, but using it can really increase your productivity and overall Excel skill set. Whenever you use the double dash in Excel, basically it tricks Excel to view a true or false response as a one or zero, which at first glance doesn't sound like much, but once you see it in action, you'll realize how powerful it really is. So stay with us. Let's start off with a really super simple example. Here we have some values and we want to know if they're equal. If we type a formula asking Excel if this first cell is equal to the second cell, then drag it down, we'll get answers of true or false, which by looking at it, we can tell is obviously accurate. But the problem is you can't use true or false in calculations. You need to have numbers. So here's where the double dash, or as it's officially known, the double unary enters the picture. Start off by typing an equal sign and this time type two dashes. Then do an open parentheses, build your formula, asking if this cell is equal to the other cell, press enter and drag it down. Notice Excel returns a one for true and a zero for false, which in turn lets us do calculations. That's basically how the double dash works, but the double dash can do more than just convert true or false responses. And we'll see an example of that later on. Let's start off by comparing two lists. Specifically, we want to see which of these rows are equal. And for this example, we'll break things down to a very granular level to make sure you fully grasp the concept. Here are the lists made up of two groups of various fruit. Why I chose fruit, I don't know, but just go with it. Anyhow, looking at the data, if we compare group one to group two, you can see the matching items are the apples, kiwis, and grapes, which gives us three matching rows. So we know the answer to our formula has to be three. Let's start by verifying this by typing a formula asking Excel if this cell is equal to this cell. Then we'll drag it down and any cells that contain true are equal. And that looks good. Now, at this point, I'm quite certain some people would use the count if function to add up all the values of true, which is definitely one way to solve this. But there are times when the count if or even count ifs won't work at all. We'll look at an example of that in a moment. But for now, let's keep going. So here is where we can leverage the double dash and type equal sum open parentheses, then two double dashes, another open parenthesis, select a range of true and falses, balance out our parentheses and enter it. We get an answer of three. All right, let's explain what's going on. Remember the double dash makes Excel look at all the trues and falses as ones and zeros. In our case, we have three trues or in Excel's mind, three ones. So adding up all the ones gives us an answer of three. But you still might be wondering, why should you even use the double dash when you can use the count if or even count ifs? To answer that, let's see an example where the count ifs would really struggle or even be ineffective altogether. In this example, we have a list of students, their scores, and if they passed or failed. What we want to do is get a count of how many scored below 70 or if they failed. Let's take a moment to go through the list and figure out who meets the criteria. That way we know what the answer has to be before we build our formula. Starting with Paige, her score is above 70 and she's passed, so she doesn't meet our criteria. Looking at Justin, his score is below 70 and he failed. In his case, he does meet what we want. Moving on to Tom, his score is above 70 and he passed, so he doesn't meet our criteria. Brock's score is below 70 and he failed, so he meets our criteria. But now let's look at Claire. Her score is above 70, but she failed. And that means she does meet our criteria, which gives us three students or three true responses that meet our criteria. So we know the answer to our formula has to be three. Now for this next part, I have to be honest and admit, I really debated on the best way to show this formula to you. My choices were either build it live or show you the results and explain it to you. I decided to show you the formula and explain what's going on because it'll be easier to understand. My goal here is to explain the concepts and the reasoning behind the formula so you can adapt it to your own work. Okay, here we go. Oh my, doesn't that look like fun? Let's start on the inside and work our way out. The first portion for column B goes through each student and asks Excel if the scores are below 70. This next portion for column C goes through each student asking Excel if the cell content is equal to fail. 
The reason for this plus sign is we want to add them together so Excel can determine if at least one of the conditions is true for each student. Now, the reason for this greater than zero is it forces Excel to turn any number above zero into true. Put another way, this tells Excel that the student has met at least one condition. But since Excel can't add true or falses directly, we need to type the double dash so it converts the trues to ones and falses to zero. Finally, we use the sum function to add up all the ones or true conditions, giving us a total of three students who are just in case, Brock Lee and Clairvoyant. As a bonus, if you want to see the calculation steps behind this formula, you can click on the formulas tab, then evaluate formulas. In the dialog box, you can click on evaluate and watch Excel walk you through every step of the calculation. But how about we look at another example of how the double dashes can help us. In this example, we have our list of students and we want to know the average for all of the tests. But the problem is someone has typed all of the scores into a single cell separated by a comma. As to why, who knows, but we have to deal with it. So one possible solution could be to use text to columns, but the problem is as new scores are added, they won't be displayed. So that option will only go so far. Another option would be to use the text split because it puts the scores into individual cells and any new data will get added to the end of the array. But the real problem happens when you try to calculate the average. If we try to take the average of the scores, Excel gives us a divide by zero error. The reason this happens is because the text split function stores the data as text, even though it looks like numbers. So when we try to use the average function, it's trying to calculate the average based off text values and Excel gets confused. But let's go one step further and say you decide to get a little cutesy and try to do the calculation in a single cell by trying to nest the text split within the average. Guess what? Excel still gets angry. Oh no. Now, here's where we can do some magic with the double dash. Click in the formula right between the first set of parentheses and type a double dash. Now, if you press enter, you'll see the average of all the tests. So why is this working? You see, the double dash does more than just convert trues or falses into ones and zeros. In this case, it's taking the numbers that are stored as text and forcing Excel to treat them as real numbers. Put another way, the double dash is a powerful technique you can use to make Excel take any values stored as text and use them as actual numbers in formulas. Now, as we wind things down, this last demonstration might be an eye-opening technique, especially for people who work with tuples. Let me know your thoughts about the double dash in Excel in the comments. And now here's another video.